Welcome back to another video. My name is Martin. The hidden history of Manchester's Irk Valley. Well, the Irk being the River Irk, and the valley is situated between two of the main roads that leave Manchester and head north. Cheetah Mill Road on one side and Rochdale Road on the other. And down in the valley, you've got the River Irk and Colliers Road kind of follows it. Now, it's the history along this valley that we're going to ex explore. I've been here before and done a video here before, but there's so much more to look at. So let's take a look at the map of where we are in Manchester and I'll show you the places we're going to investigate and explore. Okay, so there's the area that we're going to be looking at on Google Maps. Now this area is just to the north of Manchester city centre. You'll see I've put Cheat Mill Road in there for you on the left hand side and you'll see the white line which is Rochdale Road and basically we're exploring that valley there. You'll see where it says Collius Road and you'll see the little blue line of the River Irk. So Collius Road and the River Irk are down at the bottom of the Irk Valley and all those circles are the areas of interest that we're going to investigate. So I know this area quite well, so you'll have to forgive me. It's an area that I'm very, very interested in. Okay, so this is location number one. And where those cars are parked down there, that's Aspen Lane. And you'll see just there, they're doing an archeological dig. Now, that used to be a car park, well, till very recently. But before that, there used to be slum housing on there. And they're digging up now and exposing all the foundations and all the cellars of the slum housing. We'll go over and have a, co a closer look in a moment. But they're digging it up and they're doing all the research at the minute because it's going to eventually be, guess what, you guessed it, apartments. Anyway, I'll show you, I'll give you a bit of a closer look. Now, I did ask the man, I said, when were these uh, houses built, do you think, this, these, um, this slum housing built? And he gave me a figure. I'm surprised he couldn't be more specific, but he said to me, 1820 1850 early part of the 19th century said basically now not sure when they were demolished but if you look on the map you can see that they're still there in about um 19 the 1900 so it must have been the early 1900s when they got demolished but we'll take a closer look and you can see just what poor quality they were okay so there's the area on the side by side maps okay so first thing to point out is that Aspen Lane used to be called Ashley Lane. Right, I'm looking at the right hand map, the modern day map. You'll see the green area, St. Michael's Flags, and you'll see just to the left of that, the car park area. Now look over to the left hand map, the, um, the uh, 1890 map, and you'll see that that car park area used to be little houses. There, were, there was um, dwellings there. Now you'll notice my little red arrow I've put there. That red red arrow, I think is pointing to a courtyard. Okay, so we'll come back to that in a moment. But that's just so you can see what we're looking at and you can look at, compare it modern day with around about 1890. Okay, so what the lady pointed out to me, she was digging there, she said, look at that there. She said, there's a doorway there that's been bricked up for some reason. But look at this walls that are literally one brick thick imagine that in winter i wonder if they pulled them down eh
Now remember that courtyard appointed to on the map. Um, I'm wondering if this large paved area here was that courtyard because it just seemed to tally in with it position wise. And there you go, look at that courtyard, that little gully there probably would have been the only form of drainage or sewerage when this little courtyard and the houses were built. And we look at it now and it looks quite clean and everything, but uh, was it uh, Marx and Engels, Engels that wrote about the condition of the working classes and he had a lot to say about these poorly built houses and these areas. Um, and this is one of the things he said about this sort of housing. Ill-fitting windows and doors and a state of filth everywhere. Heaps of debris, refuse and offal. Standing pools for gutters and a stench which alone would make it impossible for a human being in any degree civilised to live in such a district. And he talks about, I think he uses the word effluvia to describe the filth and the stench and the absolute horror of these places when they were like hundreds of people living in these poorly built cramped conditions um, no wonder um, they died of such diseases and just at the back of this area of this dig is um, a huge burial ground where the poor were buried i think there's up to 40,000 poor people buried just in angel meadow park now i'm going to be dead honest with you about those that photo montage i just showed you there i think that's probably from late 1800s 1900s um i don't think those photos portray the absolute filth and the horror of these basement cellars you, you know there's talk of up to 15 to 30 people sleeping in a basement like that they slept naked sometimes because they otherwise they'd just get covered in bugs bed bugs um men women children disease filth so I don't think those photos show what it was actually like. They certainly show poverty, grinding poverty, but um, I don't. I don't think. I think those photos only touch the, the the tip of the iceberg of the horror of these places. Anyway, I'm just going to take you down here now, away from the archaeological dig, to a little bridge that's a Grade 2 listed building. Just before we get there, just take a look at that view there. Anyway, come and look at this bridge. It's very, very old. So this is Union Bridge, a little tiny bridge just over the River Irk. Now, it's Grade Two listed, and it's the most unassuming bridge you'd ever sort of think of in your life. But um, it dates to about 1801, and they think that's why it's called Union Bridge because. 1801 it was the unification of Britain and Ireland or the Irish Act or something like that and they think that's why it's called Union Bridge but yeah um, they reckon early 19th late 18th century so yes this most amazing bridge is 217 years old spans the River Irk it's just where Roger Street meets Colliers Road people are still using it today walking across it all the time um, notoriously difficult to film because of all the undergrowth and just where it's sort of tucked away you can't get to it almost put my waders on um, but bowled away when I found out about this bridge um, here's a picture of it in 1920 uh, now it looks wider there but nowadays it's more of a footpath and there's an iron sort of fence sort of chopping the, the, the footpath in half the bridge is still that wide and it's still uh, intact but that's why it looks wider on that picture. So if you get down there to um, Collius Road and you check it out, go down in winter when the uh, undergrowth has, uh, has gone back a little bit, you might be able to get a good view of it. 
Could not believe the story of this bridge. Could not believe it was so old. Amazing. Right, I've just stopped here on Collierce Road for a reason. Um, what you do is, you get your phone out, you open your browser up, you type in Timepix UK, and you let it find your location. Now, it doesn't always work. There might not always be a picture, but I know there's one here. Find your location, and you can tap on where the pictures might be. Look what I've found. So our journey now has taken us just up Collierce Road and that's Vauxhall Street. There it is, not much to look at these days, just a dead end street. Here it is on the 1888 map. Now Vauxhall Street is old, it's very very old because it goes back even further than this. Um, you'll see there Date Street and Kyle Street that just come off it. And as we zoom in you see to the top there Sand Street, that'll come, that'll come in later. But there, in just appearing, is Ebenezer Works. Now, what was Ebenezer Works? What became of it? Can we still go and see the remnants of it? Well, maybe we can. Let's go and see. So let's have a look and see what happened to Ebenezer Works. You can see it on the, this side here. Uh, it's all completely overgrown. There was little streets there, although I don't know where they fitted in because it seems to go up. So whether they've sort of banked it up since they pulled the streets down I don't know but ahead here was the Ebenezer works So I decided to venture a little bit further in. This is wild, completely wild. I don't think anyone's been here for years. Um, the walls of the perimeter, sort of walls of the factory, are still here. But uh, <laughs> I think there's probably only the birds and the foxes that live here now. Fascinated, I'd love to have a walk around the place fully. I see what if there's any remnants of anything, but... Uh, It's really difficult to find out what Ebenezer Works was and what it looked like. I think I finally managed to get some pictures of it. Here they are and you can see it looks quite a huge place. Obviously now just a shell of what it was. Now you see this hill behind me here? That large hill. That has been sort of landscape now but that is a spoil, industrial spoil heap and it's all toxic um, 
underneath there apparently now we'll go to the top of the hill uh, I think there's a view of Manchester from up there but if we go back to 1790 and we go up to the top of the hill here 1790 to about 1850 we'd be going to Robert Tinker's gardens or later the Vauxhall gardens where we can promenade on the lawn we can dance and apparently we can take tea if you'll allow me and if you'd lead the way now this hill is known locally or is known as the improbable hill and like I say it's a spoil hill and it's a um, it's toxic waste from the Industrial Revolution so we're talking about the Vauxhall Gardens now and we're talking late 1700s early 1800s so I would imagine at the time um, the, it wouldn't have been this hill like I say it would have been probably a gently sloping valley down to the River Irk so when we get up here and I start showing you where the gardens were I can't imagine they were on top of this actual precise hill the landscape would have probably been slightly different these are the things that keep me awake at night thinking about the improbable hill so the Vauxhall Gardens well it's amazing about late 1700s early, very early 1800s this is described as a rural idyll sort of like lots of little dells and cloughs that are all wild and untamed and over here you've got Moss Brook, uh, what is the Moston Brook and down there down the valley you've got the River Irk and it used to be quite lovely and this is where the Vauxhall Gardens were here um, and like I say it was owned by Robert Tinker and then it changed its name at some point to the Vauxhall Gardens there was a fish pond here they kept you could come and see rabbits and guinea pigs and I think it was all very uh, middle class and a bit genteel because it said it said that people used to ride in on horseback from Moston and Ancoats and for a small fee there was very good grazing here um, and they could graze the horses here this sort of like sculpture thing here I think is just some sort of like something to do with regeneration because this is toxic wasteland here it's to do with regeneration or something like that but yeah fish pond and it was all very middle class and very genteel um, so what happened to the place it's a bit like Pomona this story isn't it when you think of it um, another sort of genteel gardens well basically just like Pomona creeping industrialization um, and the um, the, there was the dye works down near the River Irk and the River Irk eventually became very polluted industry started moving in round here just down the road you've got Angel Meadow which became a hellhole of squalor and deprivation and it was no longer really attractive and I think the owner Robert Tinker eventually died um, now the soil under here apparently well not, not now because it's toxic soil but back then the soil was uh, red sand apparently and they boasted that they could grow wonderful plants and it was very good for cucumbers because they grew a cucumber um, and the cucumber was uh, what was it seven foot eight inches long and they, <laughs> they sent um, a sample of the plant that it grew from to the Prince Regent for him to have a look at but anyway this great soil that grew these wonderful cucumbers and plants was also very good in the in iron manufacturing I think they used it for the moulds for iron and eventually like I say creeping industrialization over here they became a, a sand sort of like quarry and they started selling the sand like mad so now your Vauxhall Gardens has got a sand quarry here where they're selling sand for, for um, iron manufacture you've got the River Irk down there which is now completely polluted and you've got one of the biggest sort of like slums in Manchester that way and there you go and that was the demise of Vauxhall Gardens not the explosion that saw off Pomona but uh, poor old Vauxhall Gardens eh 
And there it is, 1849 map. That map is incredibly old, 1849. And I told you that Vauxhall Street was old, didn't I? Because there it is, still there, 1849. You've got Colliers Road there as well. And in the middle there, you've got Vauxhall Gardens, complete with its little fish pond. But look at what's happening. Top left-hand side, you've got the dye works by the River Irk. And it was that creeping industry that started to, well, cause the demise of Vauxhall Gardens. At the top there, you'll see Red Sand Delph. And that was the very red sand that basically was good for the iron industry. People flogged it off and it was sort of caused the demise, really. Uh, the industry and people flogging off the sand that caused the demise of Vauxhall Gardens. But that red sand, as we know, very good for growing cucumbers. Who'd have thought that the genteel classes that used to come to uh, the Vauxhall Gardens would see it like this one day? I'm not showing you the best part of Manchester, but I'm showing you the real part. But uh, yeah, I think these are due for demolition soon. Now, this is Sand Street that you're looking at now from here. A bit different than it was back in the day. And there used to be terraced streets here behind me where these maisonettes are ready for pulling down. But it's Sand Street, basically. And over there is that hill that is the toxic sort of dump hill. Now, again, time picks. You put this location in on time picks or you come to this location time picks will find you the pictures look at the sort of wasteland there i'm going to show you a picture now Now just a stone's throw away from Vauxhall Gardens and our toxic improbable hill and I mean literally a few paces north up Collius Road there is Collius Sandstone Quarry and you'll see up top left there you'll see Smedley Lane and Collius Road split and that split in the road is still there to this very day but like I say over on the right there Collius Sandstone Quarry. Now there was quarried the red sandstone that built some of Manchester's oldest buildings. The quarry's long since gone but let's go and take a look in the area. Ah, God, has to be the hottest day of the year, I'm telling you. So this is Fitzgeorge Street, or was Fitzgeorge Street, and I have done a video here before, it was called uh, Manchester Off The Beaten Track, and the only thing that would tell you that it was a former street with terraced houses on is the cobbles I'm walking on. But just over to my right, I think, are the remains of something, and I think it's the remains of Collier's Quarry. This area was once a quarry where they quarried the red sandstone and the red sandstone is 2.8 million years old. Now, whether this is the remains of some sort of building or works, I'm not sure. Some kind of mound here of rocks or former building or something. You can see it's completely overgrown, but that rock there has got more of that red sort of hue to it that you see at Cheatham School. Um, but even when I look at the old map, the um, 1890 map, the quarry isn't on that, so it must have been a long, long time ago, probably maybe 1700s, eh? Now the stone they got from Collier's Quarry built some of the earliest buildings in Manchester. If you go in the cathedral, some of the red sandstone can be seen in there. St Anne's Church, Cheatham School, and of course, the uh, Roman fort down at Castlefield was built using the stone here and it was a case of proximity they had to use the local stone but guess what it didn't really stand the test of time it was quite flaky and it certainly didn't stand up against the acid rain that was a result of all the industry that eventually came into Manchester Ow, 
bloody ow 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 i've just rolled back into nettles i've just come through this way here right <laughs> i've just made it through more undergrowth now um through there and this is what i'm trying to show you this is incredible uh, but better view here So I'd actually stumbled upon an incredible place. That is the Moss Brook, and it comes out of a tunnel there. Um, I'm stood on the edge of a kind of ravine. It's, it's unbelievably tucked away, and I didn't even know it was here. But all this brickwork you can see in the ravine um, is actually the remains of a former mill. Now, the mill was called Bridge Mill, uh, an incredible place. This place hasn't been touched for years. Let me show you some pictures of it and I'll show you a map of what we're looking at now. So that's the area we've been exploring. Uh, top of the um, map there is where the, the quarry was, Collier's Quarry. But coming into view now is Bridge Mill. Now that is built on top of that ravine. This is a picture of the mill from the main road, the main Rochdale Road. And at the back of that building, it drops down into the ravine. It must have used the Moss Brook for water. There's what I think is a back view of the mill and the huge chimney that starts below street level. So these images you see now are from another video that I did. I actually went down there and I did a full explore of the area and what a place it was, it was quite incredible. So if you want to see this video that you're looking at now, uh, I'll put the thumbnail up and it's obviously it's on my channel. But you can see all the remains of the mill and you can see a tunnel that we explored as well. It's this video here. Well finally back to our 1849 map. And who'd have thought, just outside the city centre, there was a place called Little Horrocks and Great Horrocks. Names that have long since disappeared. And as we move along here, as we're going along the, the uh, Irk Valley, along Collier's Road, a place called Travis Island, and a mill there, just to the side of the River Irk. Long since gone, long since, I think, built over by the railways. Incredible, and so much more to look at. We didn't even look at Collier's Hall. Maybe one day we'll re revisit the area, but for now, we'll have to leave it here because the, the video is just going to go on and on. So thanks for watching. I'll leave you with some images. Take care, and I'll just see you in the next video.